Well, good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Jeff Bowles out of Good Samaritan Baptist Church and, uh, and everything. Hope everyone's having a good day. Hope everything's going your way today. Hope the good Lord's blessing each and every one of you in a mighty way. And we are on early today and everything. Uh, pastors uh, had an appointment this morning and everything, so I decided I'd come on a little early. Uh, well, this is a lot early. We normally don't come on till about 7 in the evening. We're just going to have a real brief service this morning and everything. Uh, uh, maybe a little prayer time and a little scripture and then, uh, and everything. And, uh, but I did want to come on this morning and, uh, let's, uh, and do a little something this morning and everything. Now we won't be having our service, our regular remote service this evening at seven o'clock. We won't be having that and everything, uh, since I'm doing the service now and everything for a little while. Uh, and everything, but uh, it was due to me having an appointment this morning. And Pastor, I've been up all night. I really haven't. I haven't even been to bed yet. So I'm getting ready here in just a little while to lay down and everything. After I do uh, a brief service this morning, and this will be our uh, midweek uh, remote service and everything. And uh, but did rest pretty good yesterday and got right much rest. So I'm, and didn't have a real rough night at work. So I'm feeling pretty good right now and everything. And I'm going to go lay down here in just a little while. So y'all pray for pastor and uh, pray for me and I'll pray for you and, and, and everything. And, uh, and then there's others that we need to be in much prayer for. We need to continue to remember Miss Beverly new. Now I haven't heard anything about Miss Beverly's condition uh, as of right now. I know that they was going to do the study on her and I think they did it. And I think uh, there uh, that, that she may have to come home with some oxygen, but I haven't heard from uh, Miss Stephanie whether her mom's got to come home yet or not. But I pray. Uh, but we'll just continue to pray for her. She still needs our prayers. Miss Beverly does, and everything, and pray for that family. Also, continue to remember Brother Jerry Brown, uh, Jerry Brown. Continue to remember Brother Jerry in prayer. Pray that God will reach down, touch him, and continue to help him. Uh, continue to remember Miss Marie and everything. Her and Brother James. Now, Miss Marie is at home, and I want to encourage you to give her a call and, uh, and, and check on her and everything and, and, and encourage her. Uh, and everything and pray that God will just continue to help her to go forward and everything. So just continue to remember her in prayer as well. And uh, there's others on our prayer list. Uh, continue to remember Brother Paul uh, this morning and everything. Remember him in prayer as well. Pray that God will just continue to reach down and touch him. Now, uh, for two Sundays now, Brother Paul has not been able to be with us um, and everything. Of course, he had some surgery done here the other week, and, and they found a kidney stone in his bladder. So I think one day next week, I think it's Tuesday if I'm not mistaken, they're going to uh, uh, go in and, and bust that thing up. So be in much prayer for Brother uh, brother Paul as well. Uh, did visit with him and Miss Annette uh, and blessed their new home for them on uh, on Saturday and had a wonderful time. Me and Miss Melissa uh, had a wonderful time with them on Saturday. So just continue to remember them in prayer as well. And, and everything and there's many others on our prayer list that we need to be in much prayer for uh, continue to pray for Paula and Curtis now since being here uh, they are they have gotten moved down here and getting things in order but uh, Curtis did have to go to the emergency room the other night uh, having some problems uh, Curtis is a diabetic and he's having some problems with one of his legs and everything uh, but uh, uh, he is doing better Better now, but just continue to remember him and Paula in prayer as well. And uh, there's many others on our prayer list that we want to be in prayer for. Uh, continue to remember uh, my cousin's little girl, Chloe Easter. Continue to remember her in prayer. Uh, continue to remember Sky in prayer. That's Brother Keith's daughter. She needs our prayers. And then uh, a man that we had put on there, a man named James Hood. He's a good friend of mine. Miss Melissa's, we went 
went to church with Brother James a long time, uh, not doing very good right now and everything. And they've had, had to bring hospice in to his home there with him and his wife. So continue to remember them in prayer as well. And uh, there's many others on our prayer list that we want to remember. Uh, I have a good friend, Keith Wise, uh, having some heart complications and stuff. So let's remember him in prayer and everything. And there's many others that we need to remember in prayer. And uh, just pray for everyone on our prayer list. Pray that God will reach down and touch these many needs and and everything. And um, uh, we're, we're going to have a word of prayer here real quick and everything. And then I'm going to uh, have a little scripture and then uh, and everything. And then we'll, uh, but after we pray, I'll make some announcements about the church as well. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our eternal gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day, and we thank you, Father, for blessing us throughout the day thus far. And, Lord, such a beautiful day of life that you've given us. And, Lord, there's many needs on our prayer list, Lord. We pray that you'd reach down and touch those many needs, Lord. I pray for Brother Jerry today. I pray that you'd touch him and help him. And Miss Beverly knew, Lord, I pray for her today. pray that you'd reach down and touch her. And Sister Marie, reach down and touch her, Father, and put your hand upon her. And we thank you, Lord, for what you've done for her and what you've done for others, Lord. We just give you the honor and praise and glory for it all. And Lord, we just ask you to just continue to bless our church in a mighty way. Have your hand upon it, Lord. And and Lord, just lead us and guide us and direct us in the directions that you'd have us to go, Lord. And Lord, I pray and ask you to bless the little service this morning father put your hand upon it bless those that'll watch now and those that'll be watching later lord and we'll just be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory for all things and lord i pray and ask you to speak to some soul today lord that may be lost and undone without you today father save them before it's eternally everlasting too late now lord we just pray and ask to all these things in the name that's above every name and that's the name of the lord jesus christ and for his sake, amen. Well, in the way of announcements for the church, don't forget about Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Be in our prayer rooms and in our service at 1030. Be in much prayer for uh, those services. And uh, pastor's going to do everything he can to try to get uh, our remote service back on track next week. Just the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of things to get in the way and everything. And I apologize for that. But uh, do be in much prayer for that service next week as well. And now uh, we had visitation slated for this coming Saturday uh, at 10 o'clock. Now, pastor's going to move that uh, visitation back a week uh, and everything due to this hurricane coming in. They say that we're going to get quite a bit of rain and maybe some wind and stuff. And uh, I know it's not going to be quite as bad as it is maybe down in Florida or even on our coast. But listen, folks, uh, I don't want you to be out in the rain, and I don't want to get drenched, and I know you don't want to be and everything, and it's just really hard to do visitation when it's raining. So we're going to move that visitation uh, back a week. We're going to move it back to a week from this Saturday, and uh, I'll give you some times on that and everything a little bit later. But let's be in much prayer and everything for our, all our services. Pray for the folks down in Florida as that storm's coming in and everything and then pray for uh, those that are in the pathway of that storm amen but we are going to move our visitation back a week and everything and uh and hopefully we'll have good weather that saturday amen and uh let's just be in much prayer one for another you and uh and everything and you pray for pastor and pastor will pray for you and and everything but before i get off here i just want to give you a little bit of scripture and everything something maybe to help help you along uh life's way today and it is found in the book of james in the book of james this morning i want to look at some scripture just real quickly uh and everything in the book of james chapter one in uh, verse number one, the Bible says, James, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greeting, he says. Then he goes on to say, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. 
Uh, people say, why would we count it joy? Uh, he's talking about trials here. Now, he says to uh, count it all joy uh, when these things come. Amen. Uh, when you fall into those divers, temp many temptations or many trials and everything. And I know it's hard to be joyful when trials come and everything. But let me say something to you this morning. There's uh, The Bible says all things work to the good for those that love God and are called according to to his purpose and a lot of times these things come along and they're faith builders and they help us draw closer to God and I think it's so important for us to understand and God didn't promise us no rose gardens and many times after being saved that's when the real trials begin and the thing that I look at up there uh, he says uh, to the uh, when you go back up to verse 1 to the tribe uh, 12 tribes which are scattered abroad he says, greedy. Now they were scattered and many times God's people are scattered throughout the world. We're not a sheltered people, but a scattered people sometimes. Amen. And let me say something to you. God doesn't shelter us. The Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust equally and everything. So trials are going to come, but we're to count it all joy. Listen, uh, let me say something to you. If you're born again today and you're going through something, you're not having to walk through that thing alone. Uh, why? Because God's with you. And he, and listen, uh, he didn't keep the disciples from going through the storm when they got out in the sea and everything, but he went out there. Amen. He come walking on the sea. Amen. And many of you have heard pastor explain that and everything but here he come walking out on the sea and the bible says that he come out in the third watch of the night or in the fourth watch of the night excuse me and when we think about that that's somewhere between three and six o'clock in the morning and that's the most darkest time uh, of the morning and here come the lord jesus christ walking out on the sea and, and listen he gets out there on the sea and he calms his storm and, and everything aren't you glad tonight or today Day that we've got a God that can walk on our seas or walk on and walk and help us in the midst of our storms. Amen. And then he goes on to say in verse three here, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Listen, your faith's going to be tried. Amen. Sometimes God's going to try your faith. How many of us know without faith, it is impossible to do what? The Bible says it's impossible to please him. Amen. What is faith? You're trusting God. Amen. Uh, how much do you trust him today? Amen. Uh, and listen, I, I got to be honest with you. Sometimes we hold things back, but we got to be 100% completely sold out to God. That includes your pastor. Amen. I have to be sold out to God. I got to trust God in everything. Amen. Not just some things, but all things. Amen. I got to give it all to him. I got to trust my finances to him. I got to trust my vehicle to him. I got to trust my home to him. Amen. I got to trust everything that I'm facing to God. Amen. And that's where the joy comes in. Because uh, I think I talked about this on Sunday, uh, toting those burdens. Amen. God's toted our, he's toted a heavy burden. He knows what it's like to tote those burdens. Amen. The Bible says he's a man acquainted with grief and sorrow. Amen. And he says, come unto me that unto, unto me, all you that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. Amen. Uh, but you notice what it says here. He says, but knowing this, that the trying of your faith, your faith's going to be put to the test. Amen. Sometimes, and mine's put, it does what? It worketh patience. Amen. Uh, listen, uh, how many of us know God don't do always do things instantly. I know we live in an instant world. We got instant everything. We drive through, we pick up our medicine. We drive through and we pick up uh, supper or we pick up food and everything. We got, uh, listen, uh, we got instant grits. We got instant everything. Amen. Uh, I know now you can have your oil changed like in 10 minutes or, or less. You know, everything's instant and that's the kind of world that we live in. But how many of us know God don't always work on that basis? Now, I believe God can heal instantly if it's his will. It has to be his will. But you notice what he says. He says that our faith, that the trying of our faith worketh 
patience. It helps us to be patient. Amen. And sometimes we have to learn to be patient and wait on God. Amen. And you know what? We have to be surrendered to God. And we can't doubt. Amen. We can't doubt. Amen. When we doubt, we limit him. Amen. And and listen, I'm talking about the person going through the trial. They can't doubt that God's there. And we can't doubt that God can. And we can't. And listen, we got to be surrendered to him. Amen. We got to believe and know in our hearts that he can do it and that he will do it. Amen. That's the only way that it ever works. And then it works patience. But you notice what it says, but let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entirely wanting nothing. What is God looking for from us? He's looking for mature Christians. Amen. And as we grow in our Christian walk with him, uh, it's just like a child growing. A child starts out on the milk. And that's how we had to start out, was on the milk of the word. But there's many of us now, we've been saved such a long time now, we ought to be uh, graduated and on to solid food, amen? We ought to be on the good, uh, on the steak of the word, if you will, and everything. We ought to be in the meat of the word, amen, And, and everything by now. And we ought to be growing. Listen, we ought to be a stronger Christian today. And, and, uh, and uh, more faith today than we had yesterday. Amen. And here he says, but let patience have her perfect work that you be perfect, mature, entirely wanting nothing, he says. And then he goes on to say in verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Ask who? Ask God. What is it we need today? We need knowledge. Knowledge from who? From God. Then we need that wisdom of God to use that knowledge, amen, that God has imparted to us and given to us. If we lack wisdom today, we need to ask God for it, amen, that giveth. Now, you notice something? It says that he giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Now, you notice what he said there? That God does what? He gives of that wisdom liberally, and he abradeth not. He holds it back not. And it, and you notice what he said? If we ask him, it shall be given him. Amen. In other words, it'll be given to you. You got to come to God and you got to ask him. Amen. That's so of anything that we lack in our lives. Amen. We got to come to God and we've got to ask him. People, a lot of people will say, well, what's the big deal? God knows what we need. That's true. God does know what you need today and he knows what I need. But God likes to have a relationship with us and he wants to be asked. Amen. Uh, He wants to be asked. He wants to have that relationship. Now, I had that kind of relationship relationship when I was growing up with my mom and my dad. When I wanted something, I went to them and I had to ask them. God's no different. He's our heavenly father and he likes to be asked. Amen. He does. He likes to be asked. If he didn't want you to ask him, he wouldn't say ask. Amen. If he didn't want to hear from you, he wouldn't say call. He says, call unto me and I'll answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest what? Knowest not. Found in Jeremiah 33, 3. Amen. He says, call unto me. Amen. That means we need to talk to him. Amen. We need to call on his name and we need to ask him. Amen. That's what we need to do. We need to ask God. Why? Because he'll give. Because he don't restrain and he don't hold back. Amen. He gives and uh, and everything. And but, but you notice in verse 6 what he says, but let him ask in what? In faith. In trust. We got to trust God. Amen. And let me say something here. I want to say something to you right here. If you're going through something or you're experiencing something today, maybe you're in a trial. You've heard pastors say many times that there's uh, three positions that we're all in usually. We're usually, we're either just getting ready to go into a trial or we're in the midst of the trial or we're already come through the trial and over on the other side. But let me say something to you. And I'm being, I'm going to say this sincerely and as nice as I can say it. You know what it says? But let him ask. 
Listen, I have to talk to God and pray to God and ask for the things or pray to God and ask for the help that I need. Amen. And I'm not saying we can't pray for others, but let me say something to you today. I don't ask anybody to pray for me that I'm not going to pray for myself. Amen. I'm not asking. Uh, uh, listen, a while ago I said, we've got to be the ones to trust. We've got to be. Are you listening to me? If it's a need in your life, you got to trust God for that need. Amen. You got to pray. You got to talk to God for that need. It takes you. Now, listen, it's wonderful when other people pray and we pray for other people. We got a prayer list in our church. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray one for another because I believe the Bible teaches that. But I've also believed that the Bible teaches that we have to learn to talk to God on uh, for ourselves. Amen. Uh, I never ask anybody to pray anything for me what I've not already prayed uh, over that matter myself. I believe we need to come to God as his child and say, Lord, I need your help today. Amen. Or I need you today or I need something today. And then watch God work. Amen. And others can then uh, we can share those things with others and ask others to pray for us. Amen. But we ought to be willing to pray for ourselves and we have to surrender and trust God uh, for ourselves. Amen. If there's no trust, and listen, I can pray all day long, and if there's no trust on your part, listen, you've got to trust God so in order in your life that you can please God. Amen? Uh, let me look at something just real quickly here in the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> Yeah, in chapter he, Hebrews chapter 11, just back just a little bit here. Listen what the Bible says. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. You notice that? Without faith, it's impossible. Without trusting God, you can't please him today. Amen? For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Listen, if you're going to come to God, you got to believe that he is. Now, I hope you're hearing me this morning or whenever you listen to this. You got to believe that God is who he says that he is. Amen. We got to believe. Amen. That's a personal thing there. Amen. Listen, uh, I couldn't save you and you couldn't save me. I had to do what? I had to come to Christ and then I had to believe. Believe what? Believe that he died for me, that he arose again. And, the, and now he's ascended back to heaven and sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for me. Amen. And not only that, but I had to repent and ask him for myself. You had to do what? A uh, repent and ask for yourself. Listen, it works the same way with everything. Amen. If I come to him, then I've got to believe. Amen. Now, this is something that God has revealed to me. Listen, and I believe there are people today, and I know there are people who are sick and, and, and everything, and I know that we pray for those folks, and, and I know there's people that can't pray sometimes because they're unconscious and, and, and things going on in their life. But here's what I'm going to tell you. When we come to God, and if we're able to pray for ourselves, I believe we have to pray for ourselves before. And we have to believe, amen? We have to trust God. And listen, because if we don't, and the doubt's on our end, it don't matter who else prays. I just don't believe. Well, listen, we, listen, we limit God, amen? We really do. We have to believe. You notice what he said there in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6? He says, but without faith, it is impossible to please who? To please God or to please him. For he that cometh to God, when you come to him, amen, you got to be trusting him. You must believe that he is. All right, you got to believe him and you got to believe that he's God and you got to believe that he can do it. Amen. That he and and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You got to believe that God is going to help you before God can help you. Amen. I'm being honest. I'm being true. I had to believe that God had saved me. Amen. I had to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You had to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We got to have faith. We got to have trust in him. Amen. 
Bottom line, it's a personal thing and a personal relationship with God. Amen. And then back there in James, you notice what he said here? He said, uh, but let him ask in faith, in trusting God, nothing wavering, he says. For he that wavers is like the wave of the sea and driven with the wind and tossed. You notice what the Bible says there? He said that he compares us whenever we waver, that we're like the wind. We're like the wave of the sea being driven by the wind. You ever been down to the sea? Watch them come in, watch them go out. Look here. Look at that. God can. God can't. God can. God can't. We can't be that way. We can't be uh, here today saying that he can't and here tomorrow saying that he can't and then back, back and forth, back and forth. We can't. We got to believe. Amen. We got to trust him. Amen. And we got to believe that he can. And then you notice what he said in verse seven, for let not that man thinketh that he shall receive anything of the Lord. If you're back and forth, if you're waving back and forth like the sea, listen, you're not going to receive anything of from God. Amen. And then look at verse eight, and we're going to close right here. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You notice that? A double-minded man. God can save me. God can't save me. Wait a minute. God can save me. God can't save me. See, it can't be that way. God can save me. Amen. When we 100% totally trust him, amen, that's when it works, amen? That's when we see something happen, amen? When we 100% believe him and believe that he's a rewarder of them, of them that diligently seek him. Listen, when God uh, got a hold of your heart and got a hold of my heart and we come to the knowledge of the truth, listen, we 100%, when we, when we ask God to forgive us of our sins, we 100% trusted him. Trusted him for what? For salvation. Listen, I'm not trusting anybody else today. I'm not trusting me. I'm not trusting you, but I'm trusting Jesus today. Amen. You know what Paul said? Paul said, he know in whom he believed, and he believed that he was able to keep that which he had committed unto him against that day. What did Paul commit to him? His salvation and his life. Amen. What have you committed and given to God? Your salvation and your life. Amen. My life in his hands. Your life's in his hands today. Amen. And we've got to learn to trust him. Amen. 100% completely we got to learn to trust him. Amen. I just want to say to you this morning, just quickly, right here, right now, if you've never accepted Christ as your personal Savior, why not today? Why not, why not today open your heart's door and let the Lord Jesus Christ in. Amen. He's knocking. Do you hear him today? Do you hear him? He's knocking today. And the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart, God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Will you trust him today? Will you trust him today? I hope so. I hope so. If he's knocking today, why not open your heart's door? Why not let him in today? Amen. Oh, sinner friend, you'll never make a greater decision than that to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Maybe you're going through something today, and, and listen, maybe you're facing something today. Why not trust God? Amen. God will help you work those things out. Amen. Uh, let's have a word of prayer, and, and then pastor is going to let you go and everything. Let's pray. Father in heaven, as we bow before thy throne today, once again, it is with a grateful heart that we come to you, Lord, thanking you for this beautiful day of life that you've given us, Lord. Father, thank you for these few moments, Lord, that we've had to look in your word, Lord, that we might receive something from thy precious word. And Father, we know that we must trust you, Lord, not only for salvation, but everything else. We must trust you, Lord. We must, we must have faith and trust in you, Lord. 
And Lord, I just pray for that one that may be watching now or later that don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Father. I pray this would be the day, the hour, and the moment that they would trust you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, I know you're knocking at heart's doors. I pray before this day's out that somebody will open that door, let you come in, that they might repent of their sins and accept you as their Lord and Savior. And now, Father, just go with us throughout the remainder of this day. Help us all draw closer to you, Lord. Help us all to learn to have trust in you, Lord, and, and to trust you, Lord, with all these things, Lord. Help us to turn those things over and let go and let you, Lord. Let go and let God today, Father. And, Father, I will just be careful to give you the honor and praise and glory for all things. We ask these things all in the precious name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Well, it's certainly good to have been on with you this morning. I know that it's earlier than normal, and I know Pastor come on a little early, and I know some of our folks, our normal folks, are not on, but hopefully they'll be able to see uh, the service here in a little while, just whenever they can get on and everything. And uh, Pastor just wants to say, uh, may God bless you, and uh, please remember, we will not be having our normal remote service this evening at 7 o'clock and everything. Uh, more than likely pastor will be laying down uh, having to work third shift uh, and everything and I haven't laid down this morning due to an appointment that I had and everything so decided to come on early and everything and I know many folks will be looking for this service probably a little bit later and that's okay and everything uh, they can catch it a little bit later because we're going to post it and put it up and everything but I hope everybody has a wonderful day in the Lord and uh, and uh, and everything and may God bless you and keep you until we see you again and also don't forget about Saturday we have moved Saturday's visitation from this Saturday until the next Saturday and every, and everything and uh, uh, we're doing that because of the storm that's coming in and please 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 pray for those folks in Florida and all down through there and up through Georgia even around here pray for folks uh, we're expecting some inclement weather, the hurricane coming in. So we have moved our visitation time uh, from this coming Saturday to the following Saturday. Amen. And Pastor, I'll have a time frame for that uh, for you uh, on Sunday and everything. And like I said, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And two things I want you to remember, two things that Pastor always tells you. Number one, God loves you. Number two, Pastor Jeff and Miss Melissa, we love you too. And if we can be a help to you, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Y'all have a wonderful day and hope to see you soon. Hope to see my folks on Sunday. And if you can't come be a part of the service, please, please uh, join us on Facebook. Have a wonderful day now. Bye-bye.